This is the beginning of your lecture videos for chapter four. And chapter four is all about um, new kinds of reactions for us. We're gonna talk about precipitation reactions, redox reactions, um, but most importantly in this chapter, we're gonna talk about a very uh, important topic, <laughs> importantly important topic of molarity, okay? Because we're gonna use molarity a whole lot uh, in the coming uh, chapters, and really for the rest of your time in general chemistry, molarity is a big thing. So we're going to cover that in this chapter. But first, we're going to start talking about water. And because all of the reactions that we're going to deal with happen in water, okay? There are totally other classes of reactions that happen in um non-water solvents, things like ethanol or methanol and things like that, but we're going to focus on water. And I think because water's the best. Um, water's the coolest molecule in the universe, and you'll never change my mind. Anyway, water is a polar compound, and we'll talk about um, molarity, uh, excuse me, polarity, later on in the semester. And in terms of how do you determine whether something's polar and, and all that business. But for now, you need to know that water is polar. And if we draw a picture of the water molecule, all right, oxygen bound to uh, covalently to two hydrogens, and it's got two lone pairs of electrons on it. And so that gives um, water a permanent positive and negative sides to it, okay? Its bent shape makes that possible. Gives it a permanent positive and negative sides. All right? Now, when we take and we put ionic compounds in water, they come apart. All right, and what's also important to understand, and we'll get to this a little bit later in this chapter, is that some of those ionic compounds come apart more than others. And that'll be when we start talking about soluble versus insoluble compounds. All ionic compounds come apart to some degree, but some come apart to such a small degree that we basically say that they don't, all right? So as an example, probably the most common example that we'll use when we talk about ionic compounds is good old NaCl, all right? And just as a reminder, there's a metal here. Right? So any compound that has a metal in its, in its formula is ionic. Okay, For the purposes of general chemistry, anything that's got a metal in there, you can consider it to be an ionic compound. If there's not a metal there, it's not ionic. All right? So if I take some solid sodium and I put it in some water, then I will get what we call aqueous sodium ions and aqueous chlorine ions, All right? So I've got some sodium plus and some Cl minus there. So the positive and negative sides of the water are attracted to the charges of those ions. So if I have some, um, some sodium chloride, some solid sodium chloride, let's see, let's sort of show what that looks like. I've got some Cl minuses. And in between, I've got some larger sodium pluses. And we'll talk about ion size in a later chapter. All right, so an ionic compound has this sort of orderly sort of arrangement to it in its solid state. 
And so what's going to happen is our water molecule, let's not do red, let's do purple. When we put this solid in water, on one part, I've got some, I've got a water molecule and its positive side is attracted to that negative chlorine and then it pulls it off. And then over here I've got my water molecule and its negative side is attracted to that sodium and it pulls it off. Okay, and it keeps doing that to all of these ions. And so what you end up with, let's stick with my color coding. We're gonna minimize the size just to make this easier to look at. Is that each of these ions will be pulled off into the water solution and get surrounded by water molecules. And not necessarily four of them, but I'm just not going to draw a whole lot more than that. Okay, so we say that each of these ions is now solvated. Okay, and solvated means surrounded by solvent ions. They're not solvent ions, but just surrounded by solvent. Okay. So the important takeaway from this is that when ionic compounds come apart in water, we get ions. <laughs> We get solo ions in solution. Okay. We consider these sodium and chlorine ions to be floating around in the water solution, sort of independent. Really, they're surrounded by water molecules, and that's why they stay suspended. They can move around. But the idea is that we get independent Na plus and Cl minus. Okay. So the way, the reason this happens is that the attraction to H2O of the ion to H2O is stronger than what's holding them together. So taking a look back at our, our solid component here, if the attraction between the chlorine and the sodium were stronger, the water wouldn't be able to pull the ions off. Okay, but in this case, the attraction here between the water and the chlorine and the water and the sodium is stronger than the attraction between the sodium and the chlorine. So it's able to pull the ions off, okay? So when we have what we call insoluble compounds, right? And this is what happens, what I've written here, uh, this is what happens when you have soluble compounds. Okay, so insoluble, those attractions are much, much stronger. And so the water molecules have a harder time pulling things off. Now let's take a look at, um, so we've been talking about ionic compounds, so let's take a look at what happens with covalent compounds in water. Okay, so remember covalent versus ionic. Ionic has a metal, covalent is non-metals. Oops. Right. So 
Covalent compounds still dissolve. but don't come apart. All right, with our ionic compounds, the ionic compound comes apart into its individual pieces. With covalent compounds, the molecule doesn't come apart, but water surrounds the whole molecule. So, for example, we have um, a really common, we, we all know from normal life experience that sugar dissolves in water, right? It would be difficult to um, bake things if this were not possible. Certain delicious cocktails, if you're old enough to drink, um, wouldn't be possible. All kinds of things wouldn't happen if sugar didn't dissolve in water. So we know that it does. So, but our C12H22O11 um, has polar areas to its molecule, and so that's why it's able to be attracted to water, but water doesn't break it up, okay? If we have our sugar molecule, okay, uh, the sugar molecule, let's talk about the whole thing. Water will surround the, sugar, the individual sugar molecules, but it doesn't pull them apart. Right? So it does much the same thing that it does to ions, and that's how sugar dissolves in water. Right? But it doesn't make ions. Okay, this is a, an important distinction. Ionic compounds will make ions in solution. Covalent compounds do not make ions in solution. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video right here. We'll come back with our next video and we'll talk about electrolytes and calculating ion concentrations.